Hi everyone, I'm Ruby Marchand, Chief Awards and Industry Officer, and on behalf of the Recording Academy, I would like to welcome all the new members of the class of 2023. This is a huge moment for us, the kickoff of New Member Welcome Week. Now, today we have a real treat planned for you, an up-close and personal conversation with our very own CEO, Harvey Mason Jr., in conversation with the one and only Kiki Palmer. It's going to be incredible. But before we get there, I wanted to say a few things. What is the real value of membership? Well, you're going to find out in this week, we have some amazing events planned, but it's very important for you to know that the Academy is dedicated to membership. That is the heart and soul of everything we do, whether it's philanthropy, whether it is work and advocacy, whether it's education and mentorship, and of course, our very own Grammy Awards. Everything that we do is founded on the principle that membership is our community. Membership is our peer-to-peer -peer relationship that nurtures the excellence and integrity of every facet of how we dedicate ourselves to our community. So you are a part of that. Our elected leaders come from our members and help guide the direction and future of the Academy. And we're so excited to start this journey with you and for you. And today is day one, day one, which is really an amazing moment. I'd like to say a few words about the direction of the Academy. We call ourselves the new Academy. It's because we feel refreshed, energized. We feel that our members are more diverse, more dynamic, and, and more dedicated to what the Academy stands for. And all of this has come about during the time that our CEO, Harvey Mason Jr., has led the charge. And I am so proud to call Harvey a friend, a colleague. He's also my boss, uh, but he's far more than all of that. He's a role model, and he's somebody who uh, just with great humility listens and evolves and ensures that every facet of this academy is always doing the very, very best that we can. But I want to give you a little more background on Harvey, so I hope you'll be as interested as I am in his illustrious career. So Harvey, as well as being our CEO, is a very accomplished songwriter, music producer, and movie producer. And he has written and produced songs for a host of amazing artists, everyone from Elton John to Justin Timberlake, from Whitney Houston to Beyonce, from Aretha Franklin to Ariana Grande, from Britney Spears to Mariah Carey, from Luther Vandross to Justin Bieber, from Michael Jackson to Chris Brown. And I could just keep going and going and going because Harvey never stops. He is absolutely amazingly talented and we're just so proud of everything that he does he's also produced music for music and film uh, in, in film and tv from everything from straight out of compton to dream girls the pitch perfect franchise and many many more so harvey thank you for everything that you bring to us you inspire us and this is going to be a great opportunity for people to learn more about you Kiki Palmer is our special guest today. She'll be in conversation with Harvey. We're so excited about that. We all know Kiki from Nope, where she earns unanimous rave reviews from critics and audiences alike, as well as a New York Film Critics Award for Best Supporting Actress. Congratulations on that, Kiki. She's also voiced the new character Izzy in the Disney Pixar, in the Disney Pixar Lightyear and hosted NBC's reboot of Password with Jimmy Fallon 
Fallon, which earned her a nomination for Outstanding Host for a Game Show Award in the 2023 Emmys. She launched her record-breaking podcast, Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, and will next star in and produce a comedy, The Backup, opposite Kevin Hart. She rose to prominence at a very, very early age. She was the youngest talk show host in history, and she had a breakout role at the age of 12 in Aquila and the Bee. Kiki is a remarkable talent, and we're so thrilled to welcome her as part of our webinar today. Now, for those of you who are part participating, I hope you'll join us in the Q&A, and we'll have instructions on the screen in a minute on how to do that. And now I am very, very happy to welcome Harvey and Kiki. Kiki, please take it away. Thank you so much, Ruby. And hello, Harvey. How are you? It's so good to see you. Hey, 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 Kiki. Hi, everybody. Last time I saw you, you we were in uh, the studio with Tori Kelly. I know, I know that's right. This is, this is another opportunity to get together, but I always love working with you, Kiki. Thank you. Yes. How have you been? You've been good staying out the way of the hurricane? Yeah, I've been a little crazy. The hurricane, the earthquake, traffic jam. I mean, what uh, else can you throw at us? <laughs> well, I'm glad we're here today and we get to talk because our goal is to get to know you a little bit better. I mean, for the folks watching, you can submit questions via the Q&A feature. So don't forget about that, guys. It's at the bottom of your screen. And time is tight, so we're going to jump right into it and get through as many questions as we can. So let's get into it. I mean, as we launch into the exciting new member welcome week, I am genuinely curious about your journey um, from your beginnings as a creator to where you stand today. So I don't know. To start off, could you give us an overview of what new member welcome week is all about? Of course. And you touched on it. Getting to know me is okay. I think that, I mean, not sure that many people want to do that, but what everyone would like to do, I hope, is learn more about the Academy and what New Member Week means. Uh, we see it as an opportunity to just hear from some of the leadership of the Academy elected and from the staff side as well. And also just to learn about what it is the Academy does. Most people know about the voting. You know about the Grammys, the TV show and the sexy, sizzly, like, you know, event that we do. But there's so much more behind that. Uh, so I'd hope you could all kind of understand what we do, find a place, find what you're passionate about, see where you fit in, uh, and just really have all the tools to maximize the membership and the value of the membership to you and your career. Yes, I love that. I love that. Now, it's a funny thing. You grew up actually in a musical family. But when did you realize that you actually were destined for the creative path? Because sometimes it can be hard if you come from a family that's into something and you kind of want to steer off, you know? No, I was instant. I started playing piano when I was like two years old. I grew up, my dad was playing notes and I'd try and go find notes. And so I always wanted to be a creator. I wanted to write songs. I, I think I recorded my first song when I was age eight or nine. So <laughs> it started really early for me. Always knew I could go no other direction. I love that. And it was the same for me. I, my mom did music. She recorded in the studio all the time growing up. And she let me and my sister do our first song when I was like seven or eight. And it's so cool yeah. when you hear uh, that kind of passion with family. Well, now, I want to hear your seven or eight year old song and I'll play you mine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. I will. Harvey, don't play. I really will send you that. <laughs> OK, come on. I got you. Now, how did your journey as a creator lead you to the Recording Academy? Like, when did you become a, a member and kind of get into that? that part of our industry? I should definitely know the date, but I don't. But it's probably 18, 20 years ago I became a member. And quite honestly, Kiki, I joined because I heard if you joined, you could vote for yourself. And so <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to get nominated. I wanted to win a Grammy. And I knew I couldn't vote for myself if I wasn't a member. So it was done under selfish reasons and selfish motivation. But once I became a member, I started to learn about some of the things that hopefully we'll talk about, which was all the other things that the Academy does beyond just the awards, you know, the advocacy and fighting for the rights of music people in DC, the education preservation, the work that the museum does to advance music, our music cares organization does all the philanthropic work, the service, the give back to the music community. Those are just some of the things that the Academy does to make our community, our industry healthier and more vibrant and, and give us all the ability to, do what we love and make music and hopefully use the power of music to make an impact in the world. 
I love what you're saying with that because sometimes it can be so surface when you think about the entertainment industry and what we do and, and, and how we're, you know, of course, like you said, initially thinking about just wanting to win a Grammy, but I think it makes the world so much bigger of how much you can actually truly touch and affect people with music when you realize what you can do when you become a member and you become a part of this type of community. Um, when you think oh. about when you think about yourself as a creator, I mean, do you feel like community is important to your success? Absolutely. Community has been everything to my success. Even the community of the Academy has made such a difference. The relationships I've made, the people I've gotten to work with and collaborate with, even it's in the studio. Uh, a lot of them I would not have met were not for the Recording Academy community or the collaboration amongst just other people in the industry that I've gotten to meet. And that's one good thing about the Academy is you will absolutely get a chance to meet and exchange ideas and share thoughts with some really cool and interesting diverse groups of people creators and that leads to i believe even more enhanced creativity and just flexibility and expansion of uh, the brain power that we have when we're sitting around creating songs or writing songs or engineering or producing or whatever all of our roles are they can be enhanced by learning taking in new information and meeting different people yes yes i mean i've heard this message that membership is the force behind everything at the Recording Academy, uh, from the mm -hmm. Grand Awards, advocacy for music people, music education, phil uh, phil philanthropy, or philanthropy, yeah. um, which you just mentioned. Can you talk yeah. about how members are driving all these different areas, many of which most people maybe haven't even heard of? Well, it's really what we're established on, and it's the foundation of the Academy, and it is truly membership geeky. You got it right. The members drive virtually everything we do the members are the people who elect our elected leaders they elect our our governors and our trustees and our chair and our vice chair so those are all done by member elections mm. um, all of our committees most all of our committees are are made up of our members and so our members are also the ones that are proposing changes to the awards or to a pro our processes uh, our members are the ones that are deciding what categories are are added to our, our list you know we added three new categories this year those were based off of proposals I, love, I yeah. love it and I love those proposals because I think it's so true music is changing and where we're finding music is changing and what it means to be an artist is changing so to hear you talk about oh. other categories I mean I think that that's major and, and and yeah I mean that's that's exciting but you know Kiki one point I have to make is without membership and without their ability to influence the direction of the academy we can't keep up there's no way that me or Ruby or the other people on the Zoom from the Academy can know everything about all genres and know what is best for different music communities. So having a diverse membership and having relevant members who are working in the industry today telling us, hey, Harvey, you got to do this or hey, Ruby, we need these new awards. And so that's the power and the value of membership. You have to keep your academy, our academy, informed and up to date and relevant and on point because without you, we can't do it. I love that. And I think it's so important to say it because I, some, I think sometimes we forget that that's a role that we can play. A lot of times you feel like it's out of your hands and it actually is all in your hands. So I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. um, what is something that you love about your job and where you're, out, where you're at right now as a creator? And what I love about my job, there's two jobs actually. So the first job I'll talk about is my music creativity and producing and songwriting. That I love the fact that I can start with nothing in the studio and you've done it, we've done it together. You come up, you have nothing. And then six hours later or 12 hours later, you have a song with music and lyrics coming out of the speakers and you're listening to it. You're like, man, we just made that. It was an amazing accomplishment and it feels so good. I never get over that feeling of being able to make something from where there was nothing. Uh, so creatively, that's really fulfilling. From my perspective as the CEO of the Academy, which is my main job now, is, is to bring people together and use the power of music and the platform of the Academy to do good. That's my favorite part of the job. I love getting to sit and talk to you, Kiki, and other people like you that are incredibly talented incredibly passionate and just great at what they do. And I touched on it, but learning from people that I talk to, but then also hearing different perspectives and just getting that exposure and the energy exchange from, from people that translates to me being able to take the information, assimilate it all, ingest it all, and then figure out how I can have the biggest impact. How can the Academy 
make a difference and move the needle. So the fulfilling part of my work is really trying to use what we have for good and for change. Oh, yes, I love that. And I think you're doing amazing at that. You've inspired Thank me you. in a short time. I mean, you already inspired me, but just from a standpoint of activating my, my you know, being a member and what I can do and bring to it is, is just awesome. So you've answered a lot of my questions, but we do have a ton from new members who are watching. So I want to get to some of those um, questions. So we'll try to get through as many as we can. So uh, the first one is, what is the best way to stay involved in the Recording Academy as a member who resides outside the USA? That's really good. That is good. There's a bunch of ways. First of all, you can do all the things we talked about, submitting proposals. You can definitely vote, and we need you to vote and bring that global perspective to our outcomes. You can also attend virtual seminars or virtual events, which are happening all the time. That's one good thing. Not one, but there is one of the good things that came from COVID was the fact that we could put on a lot of programming, we could host a lot of events, and we could make sure more people are accessing it because of things like this, like Zoom or other tech. So those are some of the ways that I would encourage you to stay involved and stay active. I love that. Um, if you have one specific marching order for new members, what is it and how can we be most helpful supporting the Academy? Give us constant feedback. I yeah. talk a lot about my email is always open. My ears are always open. Our staff is very receptive to feedback and, and getting information. So if I could ask of anything of our new members, it would be to become active. Nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to improve or evolve without your help. When we talk even about you know politics in our country and, and people are upset about something, they feel like, oh, I don't want to get involved because I can't affect it. Well, that's not the case at the Academy. You can absolutely affect it. Every aspect and component of what we do, members can be involved. And in. so my advice to you would be find what you're passionate about, find where you want to make a difference, where your heart is telling you you have to make a difference and laser in on it and come to us with ideas, information, feedback, support, however you can. Oh, yes. Um, you kind of answered this question, but I want to ask it again, just in case there's any more that you have to say on it. But do Academy members have input on categories? Yeah, and it's a fair question. It's something I'm not sure everyone understands is when you are working in a genre of music, you have the best sense of what needs to happen. You have a sense of when you're not being heard, when you feel like there's not a place for you, when we're just using the wrong words to talk about your genre. That has to come from you all. I know you know, a fair amount about music. I don't know everything. And I don't know all the different genres. I don't know what's going on in, you know, clubs around the country or stages or studios or, or other areas of, of work for the music community. So we rely on members to let us know with proposals, what do you think the Academy should be doing differently? What are the categories we need to pay attention to? What are the descriptions for the music that we need to change? What are just the nomenclature around how we talk about music comes from the members. So yes, 100% you have involvement. Now, obviously, we've been seeing a lot of different tech advance advancements from the metaverse or the NFT space. And, and so how can the Recording Academy members prep for industry changes? That's a question for all of us, whether you're a member or not, we all have to be prepared for industry changes. Hopefully, and my belief is that the Academy members will be better positioned because we are constantly on the lookout and we have our eyes wide open to what's happening around tech and the evolution of tech in our industry on the creative side of it, on the business side of it. There's so much to pay attention to blockchain, metaverse, NFT, all the other things that are going on. Uh, the Academy is abreast of all of that. We have teams in DC. We spend a lot of resources and, and woman and manpower on the ground, making sure we're across legislation, we're meeting with the Copyright Office, we're fighting and advocating for music people to be able to make a fair wage. These are all things that we're doing. So uh, the members can stay involved in that if you have a passion or even a concern about that, working with our advocacy team, working on our advocacy committees. There's uh, our district advocate day. There's uh, Cap uh, Grammys on the Hill day. So there's all these activations that our members can be a huge part of if you're concerned about tech or the future of music. Love that. Okay, what lessons can musicians, songwriters, music producers draw from the recent actor strike to enhance our own industry? That's a good question. It's a pretty deep question, Kiki, whoever's asking that. That's, that's a tough yeah. one. 
what we can learn there is that we all have to advocate. We all have to stand up and fight for ourselves. We have to make sure that we're being treated fairly and equitably and people are respecting our value. And as creators, that's something that we all have to do. We have to, we've done it in the past. We've done it during, you know, some of the piracy days, some of the other technological advancements have, have called into question what was our worth as creators or it's diluted uh, our particular brand. So it's something that's nonstop, that's ongoing. And I see what is happening with the strikes for the film and TV side. Um, you know, we're not a union. And we, we're a membership organization, but we will continue to advocate on behalf of our members to the best of our ability. Love that. I think you answered that perfectly. Um, I'm loving that we're getting through a lot of these questions. Okay, the next one is the Recording Academy has been making strides in its effort to commit to diversity. What more can you share about the Academy's upcoming initiatives for diversity this year and into the next? That's a whole uh, Zoom here. We could go on about that for an hour, Kiki. Honestly, we've had so many new programs because one of the things we needed to work on most at the Academy was our diversity. I'm not talking just black and white. I'm talking gender balance. I'm talking about geography balance, genre balance. There's so many different things we needed to do to level set some of the things that we were doing in our membership and our staff and our committees, our elected leaders. These All these things need to be paid attention to because we're an organization that represents Right now, I think 91 categories, all many, many different genres, different crafts, different skill sets. So we've started the Black Music Collective. We've started uh, the Songwriters and Composers Wing. We have the Producers and Engineers Wing. We have all these different areas of, of very special, specialized thinking and activization. activation. Uh, so there's a lot of work to do there. There's still more to come. Uh, women in the mix. We've done women's groups to try and increase our, our women's representation as far as voters. We committed to having 2,500 new women voters by 2025. We're almost 80% of the way to that goal. We've committed to try and bring up the black representation because we know based on the industry, we have roughly 33% of the industry's music is black music created and consumed. So we wanna make sure our voting body is representative of that. So there's a lot of those types of programs that we've started. I'm trying to go through them quickly because we have a limited time, but there's so many things. That's such an important part of who we are as an academy. We have to make sure we're representing all the different groups. And as I said, it's not just, you know, the race, it's the gender, it's the genre, it's where they're coming from, it's the age. We want to be the most um, representative membership that we can because we need our outcomes to be accurate and they need to reflect all those different considerations. So if we're just made up of one group of people, it's not going to work. If we came and we were just an organization of, you know, uh, 46-year-old banjo-playing women, we would have very specific outcomes around our membership. So we've got to make sure we're covering a wide swath of people and crafts and uh, locations in our membership. Yes, I mean, you're such a fearless leader. Every time I hear you answer one of these questions, I'm just thinking how lucky we are to have you in our oh, industry. thank you, Kiki. The Academy is to have you because everything that you're saying is just yes, 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 yes. And it's so empowering. Thank you. Um, you. You're welcome. Um, now, this question actually goes back to something that you were saying earlier. And I love that we have another question from the audience about this. Um, they say, when you say submit pro proposals, do you mean submitting music for consideration or do you mean other ideas for activations, events, concepts, et cetera? Um, and, and, and who would you submit that to? So two totally different things. Submitting music is one thing is done through you know the submissions process, online entry process, and that um, you know we had over twenty four thousand submissions last year. This year probably will be about the same. So we we take in a lot of music. There's an incredible amount of music being made this you know this year and every year. You know that we've seen with uh, what's going on with technology. There's more and more music being created than ever before. And I would have to say, maybe you either agree or don't agree. I, I think it's getting better and better. There's more great music and more interesting and, and creative ways of expressing music than I think we've ever had before. So that's the one bucket. The other area is submitting a true proposal for what the Academy should be doing around awards or other governance proposals all come from our members. So that would go into Ruby's office. And it's a question we can ask Ruby to define a little more clearly, but the proposal process is it's robust. It's serious. And she has a team. Ruby has a team of people that work exclusively with 
members or people who would like to create a proposal because there's a little bit of formality to it. You have to draft it up in a certain way. But the basic idea is always still the same. If you have something that you think needs a change or an award that you think we need to either uh, edit or add, we contact Ruby's team. They help us guide us through what the process is and they submit a proposal and it runs its way up the chain. I love that. I love typing up a proposal. So y'all might have to get some stuff from me. <laughs> yeah, we got you. Come on. <laughs> well, I think that that's it for today. And, and I hope that we got through as much of uh, the audience questions and maybe answered some, because I've seen a few coming back and forth. So hopefully we, we kind of answered most there, but this has Kiki, been- an Before you go, can I add one thing? I want to add one thing to our new members, because this is something as a new member, I didn't understand when I first came on. And I, I was wondering if someone was going to ask me the question, but I want to make sure all of our members are advocates for the academy and for our industry. And so here's what's important to know about the academy. You heard us talk about what we do, the advocacy in DC, the music cares, the education preservation. These things are all funded by our Grammy TV show. Okay. Just want to be clear. You understand the academy gets paid money from our partners at CBS for our show. Our show is only good if our, members are supporting it they're voting if our people are coming up on stage celebrating music celebrating each other if we have a great show we have great ratings if we have great ratings we can make more money for the academy and the academy we are not for profit we don't sit around saving money we don't do crazy investments what we do is take the money from the show and we push it right back into the, the industry into our community into our people not just to serve our members but to serve our industry. And again, tens of millions of dollars advocating in DC to make sure me, singers like you, producers like me, songwriters, everyone in the industry can make a living in a fair wage and we're getting remunerated properly for our copywritten material. Tens of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars through Music Cares for music people who just need help. You might've lost the gig. You might've crashed your car. You might have a drug problem, mental illness. You call Music Cares. They're there. During COVID, we've given away over $30 million to music people, not just members, music people who need help. And then finally, the museum, the education, working with children, getting instruments in people's hands, getting teachers into underserved communities. This is what the museum and our educational programs do. Again, tens of millions of dollars. All this comes from the show. So as members, please support the show. Respond to people when they have something to say about uh, what is the Academy really doing with some of that information? Hopefully some of it will stick, but I'm so thankful Kiki for you for coming to do this, to help educate our new members and start opening the door to what it is that we do. And I'm thankful to all the new members who chose to be here, whether you chose to just vote for yourself, which is fine. Cause that's what I did. Or you chose to become a member because you cared about the mission and you cared about our music community and you want to see the future be positive and, and make sure there's an industry for us to thrive in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kiki, you're the best. You're the best, Harvey. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing conversation. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm so glad I got to do this. Bye.